Hi everyone, welcome back to a video. So in this video, we're going to be going over graphing linear functions. So the first thing we're going to do is start off by defining a few terms, right? So let's look at the parent function or the general equation for linear functions. Let's get a little bit of terminology out of the way. So the term before a variable or the number before a variable is known as a coefficient. I'm sure you know that, just making sure. And that's pretty much the only terminology we need to clear up. So now let's get into deter like to defining the terms, right? So in y is equal to mx plus b, let's first look at what are the values of x and y, right? So x and y are actually the coordinate pairs that you're going to plug in, that you're going to plug into the equation, right? So say an example of a coordinate point would be two comma one or negative three comma five, right? So that's what a coordinate pair is and that's the values of y and x. So then what we're going to define is the value of m, right? What is m? So m is the coefficient or the term you're going to multiply this value by and graphically it's the slope so let's go back to childhood for a little bit right so say you i'm sure you guys have been on ramps before it was actually one of my favorite things to do go up and down ramps but if you ever heard anybody refer to the ramp as too steep or if it's too shallow, right? They're referring to the slope of the ramp or how elevated it is, right? So how do you find slope? So to find slope, let's just draw on this nice coordinate grid. Let's just draw a really quick line. So let's make a linear function here. The basic parent linear function is f of x is equal to x, where your slope is what we'll see. So in this line, let's try and figure out the slope, or let's try and figure out this coefficient, right? What is a coefficient here? Well, I don't see a coefficient. So if there's no coefficient, I can assume it to be 1, because 1 times anything is equal to itself. So here, m is equal to 1. So the formula for slope, or what people like to call it, is the distance traveled or the change in y, which is delta y over delta x, So which is equal to the value of m. So say the change here, we know that the m value has to equal 1. So we have a change of 1 up and a change of one to the right because the slope is positive, not negative. So say that's change is one, the change is plus one. Now we're gonna apply the same one, up one to the right one, up one to the right one, and so on, so forth, all the way up. But there's also, another half of the line that we haven't plotted yet, which is the negative side, right? So it's important to know here to highlight that negative one divided by negative one is equal to positive one. So to get the slope of positive one, you would get, you can either do positive one divided by positive one, which is one, or negative one divided by negative one. So here we moved up and right. Here we're going to go down and left because graphically that's equivalent to traveling down and to the left, right? So minus one all the way down. And then we draw a straight line through. It's important to make it straight because um, you're gonna, gonna get accurate graphical results. Oh, wow. Actually, you know what? We don't need that. Okay, so let's just draw it out by hand because 
not okay there we go try to make it as straight as possible as uh no okay that's as close as it's gonna get um it's pretty straight in my opinion so what we saw here was the difference or the change right this change or the distance traveled in the y direction over the distance traveled in the x direction a way to think about it is actually rise over run so let's write that down here so slope which is also equal to rise over run right now let's look at the b value right what is the b value well the b value is actually the y intercept so now let's take a look at our parent function again right let's try and understand where we got the y intercept from i don't see anything added in this position so does that mean that there's no y intercept well no because clearly when we look at the graph here of our parent function we see that the y intercept or the point where it intercepts the y axis is 0 comma 0 so our b value is 0 here so remember every line usually has a y intercept and ha has a slope right so now that we understand the basics of how this works right we've defined it we go we talked about rise over run the change in the direction of y versus the change over the direction of the x now let's go into solving practice problems right please work okay there we go okay i'm sorry guys this is probably making you dizzy okay there we go so now what we're going to do is we're just going to change colors of the gray let's see what happens when you have a difference right so let's first find what our m and b values are right so looking here the coefficient of x is two so we know our m value is equal to two or our slope is equal to two and our b value is equal to four right so from let's attack the slope part first right from saying that m is equal to two we understand that the change over y over the change in x is equal to two over one so from this we understand that we need to move two up and one to the right so let's just think about that for a little bit right i think it's a bit different so what we can do is from any point right from our starting point on the line we have to move two up and one right or if you want to go in the other direction two down and one left so let's see why this is true right let's start by plugging in values so say let's start from negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, right? So from negative two, let's plug in the value two times negative two plus four, which is minus four plus four, which is equal to zero, right? So at negative two, we have an x-intercept because when the value of y is zero, um, the x, what's the value of x when the value of y is zero, right? So now let's solve for negative one, two times negative one plus four, which is equal to negative two plus four, which is equal to positive two. So that's one value. So then we get to zero. Two times zero plus four is equal to four. So here we find our y intercept. 
Well, from the equation, that's what we found, right? The B value is the y-intercept. So this just proves our point of where these values are coming from, right? So now let's try and get it into two times one plus four, that's two plus four, which is equal to six. And finally, we have one last point, two times two plus four, which is equal to four plus eight. I mean, four is equal to eight, my bad, I'm sorry. So now that we have this value here, let's start plotting it, right? So first let's try and find our origin. I'm gonna eyeball it because I think that's the origin about right there. And from here, let's make our scale one block is equal to one unit. It's always important to determine your scale because otherwise people will not understand what unit you're going by because it could mean one block is equal to two units or three units. It's just much more clearer to make it, to make it clear, right? So now let's start labeling our axis. So one, two, three, four, five, six, minus one, minus two, minus three, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Uh, then one, two, three, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna make you listen to me count. So now let's start off by pl plotting the points. So let's see how these translate from the table into ordered pairs, right? It's actually pretty self-explanatory. You just take the X value, make it your X value, Y value, Y, like that. F of X is actually Y. So you can think of it as the Y value is that, um, the value, so zero comma four, one comma six, two comma eight. And let me point out that it's very important to make sure that you plot at least three points before you, or you find at least three points before you start graphing, just so that it becomes more clear and there's no error in graphing. So let's start off by graphing our first point, which is negative two comma zero, then negative one up two, then zero comma four, our y-intercept, I'll just bubble that in. Uh, then we have one comma six, all the way up here. And then two comma eight, that would be all the way up there. And we're just gonna graph it for fun. So now let's try and find the negative points. More, we found all the, a lot of the points towards the right. But what if we try finding it to the left? Well, you don't even need to plug in values. You can just look at the slope value. So one slope value could be, we decided that it was down to left one, down to left one, down to left one, so on and so forth. So now we're just gonna connect it in a straight line. Ideally, this would be continuous, but I just got a new tablet and I'm not able to, I just started using it. So I have to figure out a lot of the kinks and everything, but still it works fine. So it looks pretty straight to me. So now let's start dissecting this graph a little bit, right? What is the, what are the intersection points? What are the points that we should be on the lookout for? And if we didn't have a table, how would we graph this, right? So the main thing you need to know is a single point on the graph that you know is on the graph. And usually the safest bet is your y-intercept because it's in the equation. You have, you know that it's on that, the line intersects it there. So for us, in our case, that was 0, 4, right? So that was our y-intercept. So we could have gone two up, one left, right, 
two up, one right. Or, and then we could have gone two down, one left, two down, one left. And all of our equation points, all the table points affirm that, right? So bottom line, it's important to understand the concept of slope, how you go up and how you have the direction that it determines and so on and so forth. And it's also important to understand the position of the y-intercept. It's very important that you determine at least three points, three points before graphing and you can figure out the rest. So that is it for this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, so on and so forth, please let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day.